there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Joshua, now the acknowledged leader of Israel, had acted as prime minister under Moses. His quiet, unpretending fidelity and his steadfastness when others waved gave, gave evidence of his fitness to succeed Moses. Furthermore, Joshua was well known as a warrior and his marital gifts and virtues were now especially valuable. Before the Israelites lay the Jordan River, its banks now overflowing with the melting of the snows, mountain snows. Across the river was the heavily fortified city of Jericho. But Joshua knew that God would make a way for his people to perform whatever he might command. When the time came to move forward, those carrying the ark containing the Ten Commandments led the way, separated from the rest of Israel by a half mile. As soon as their feet stepped into the river, the waters of the Jordan were swept back until the riverbed lay bare. Then the priests stood in the middle of the river until all Israel had passed by. This miracle made an enormous impression on both Israel and its enemies, filling the surrounding nations with terror. At Gilgal, their first encampment in the Promised Land, the Israelites celebrated the first Passover since the rebellion at Kadesh. The manor ceased the next day. They could now eat from the produce of the land of Canaan. Okay, key thought. The heathen nations had reproached the Lord and his people because the Hebrews had failed to take possession of Canaan. And as they expected, soon after leaving Egypt, their enemies had triumphed because Israel had wandered so long in the wilderness and they had mockingly declared that the God of the Hebrews was not able to bring them into the promised land. The Lord had now signally manifested his power and favor in opening the Jordan before the people, and their enemies could no longer reproach them. And this is from Patriarchs and Prophets, page 486. Well, today's lesson, when we feel alone and a failure, the Lord often works in our behalf to part the Jordan River in our lives. Amen. So yeah, when we feel alone and, and a failure, the Lord often works in our behalf to part the Jordan River in our lives. So what is your Jordan River? <laughs> you know, that's the question for each one of us. interesting twist on why Israel was so long in the desert because they lost not only faith but they declared mockingly that God was not able to bring them into the promised land and I often wonder how can people who experience so many miracles you know they were delivered from Egypt already they were already they should have been celebrating and they they saw the the Red Sea parted for them. They saw all these huge miracles, and yet still, they declare that God is not able to to bring them into the promised land. How do you how do you explain this? Like I often wondered how they, you know, when God showed up as in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. I mean, that was the presence of God. How how did how did they miss that? How did they forget that? So had the, they had the pillar of of cloud they had a, the the pillar of fire at night they saw the the sea parted they also witnessed you know the miracles the plagues in egypt and how israel was protected uh they they witnessed all of that and even god provided for them heavenly manna and they, they complain about that one too so yeah it sounds like the big miracles are not what is going to bring us closer to god you know, the big miracles and and deliverance from God may not necessarily be be the I mean, convincing uh, element for for people to uh, to praise God and be thankful for each day. So, what is it? Yeah, I, you reminded me of that. Go over to um, Luke where, or Matthew where it talks about or John. Heard me 
where where he raises Lazarus from the dead. You know, like uh, you, even if you raise somebody from the dead, doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's going to follow Jesus. Because we saw that with the Pharisees, they I mean they immediately went out figuring out how they're going to get rid of Jesus now and Lazarus again. So it's not the miracles. Yeah. So. So that's the encouraging part that that sometimes you know we got God can still come and still delivers his people despite of all the complaints but you know the kind of the negative part of this morning versus that Israel didn't even pay attention they didn't notice they were not impressed and I oh, I wonder if we are often not impressed with with what God provides for us. And that's why maybe our spiritual life often suffers because we have so, so much plenty, especially in this neck of the woods, you know, compared to the rest of the world, we have so much, so much stuff. We're blessed so much that we don't notice that. And we become discouraged and, and stuff like that, you know, I don't know. But I just uh, have a feeling that maybe that's the case. We are like Israel. We are blessed. We are receiving all the blessings. And yet, and yet we struggle. Even in this blessed country, right? Compared to other places. You know, you can say we have more than enough. But we still complain. <laughs> we still complain. So what's the solution, guys? I don't know. What's the solution of not to not to complain? Anyone? Well, we have to be grateful and count our blessings, but somehow human nature isn't programmed for that. That's why we're given instructions specifically to do that. Yeah. Gratitude. Things yeah. Like that. Well, let's let's have the Let's thank God today. You know, one of our prayer, you can say, request is uh, is to thank God because even the Lord's prayer doesn't start with petitions. It starts with adoration of God, you know. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's all about praising God, giving thanks to him. And maybe let's spend some time today just thanking the Lord. Maybe one of us can volunteer and just and just start our you know chains chain of prayers with simply thanksgiving. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and no matter what's going on in our lives, we want to we want to praise you. You've promised us so many things. You've promised us we wouldn't you wouldn't leave us or forsake us. And you're the Prince of Peace, and we can partake in that peace. And we thank you, Father. And <clears throat> and we thank you for your your immeasurable sacrifice. Even if only one of us were to have sinned, you would have come to rescue us, help us to understand that. And we thank you for that, dear Father, and your continued ministry in heaven. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you that we can gather together and and bring our requests and our, our thanksgiving. Our thanksgivings to you, Lord. We thank you for the many blessings that you've poured out on us, for our families, for plenty of food, for, for roofs over our heads. We thank you for the promises that you have given to us of your love and the assurance that you will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you, Father God. I, I echo what has already been said, that for your love and your mercy and your grace that you extend to us every single morning, and the very fact that you wake us up, Lord, wake us up to to, uh, to live another day, to serve you, and, and to be grateful for what you have done in our lives, and watching over us through the night and keeping us safe. Uh, for your patience, Lord, that you have with us, even when we make mistakes and we keep falling down, but we, you help us to keep getting back up, Lord. You tell us to never, never quit, never give up praying, to keep on asking and to keep on seeking and to keep on knocking, and that you would never, ever leave us. You would 
You said you would be with us right to the very end. We thank you for that, Jesus. There's, it's it's a never ending, um, never ending to thank you, Lord. It's ongoing, and we we will we'll not be able to say it, that we've arrived until until we are standing in front of you, Jesus. And what a day that will be. Well, Lord, thank you for reminding us of Egypt, of your people who failed to take possession of Canaan because they complained they, uh, and they rebel against you despite of all the miracles. And uh, their enemies were quick to uh, declare that you cannot bring them to the promised land. Mm. But in their weakness, and uh, you still, Lord, was able to manifest your power. So we pray that you will do the same thing in our lives. Lord, please manifest your power in our daily lives so that not only us, but the people around us will be inspired to see your, your greatness, your, your love, your kindness. And this is my prayer for each one of us. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's uh, dedicate the last, you know, 10 minutes to the any prayer requests, uh, any updates on any of the prayers we've been doing. Oh, my brother, he went back into the hospital again this week with uh, low heart rate, uh, uh, elevate, elevated heart rate, low blood pressure. I think that's what he said. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't keep any food down. Mm. I think it might be related to the medication they're giving him for his liver. We also received two requests, one from Jose Kua, his co-worker, who just fell down, fell off the roof. Oh, no. Because they're in, in the construction. Three stories. And, uh... Yeah, I think I, I called Jose last night to see how he was doing. And um, I think somehow... He fell through one of the scaffoldings or something like that. Did that broke his fall a little bit? That maybe? sort of like broke his fall, yeah, because it could have been a whole lot worse had he gone right down through. Um, Jose said that uh, they got him to the hospital, and um, they, he's, he's, he said he was doing good even though he was, you know. Beat up, fought, banged up. Uh, bleeding a lot or something like that. In, on the, the initial was bleeding a lot. but The request is to pray for the family of uh, Tatiana family, Tatiana's family. What category, Pastor? Let's create a category called refugees. Oh, and, bank and new, and new okay. Immigrants. She just had a child and she has two, uh, two kids. Their father, or Tanya's husband, should be getting documents so that he can come and join his family because- It you know, says that uh, he was on his way home. He was voluntarily taken to the military registration enlistment, enlistment office. And they stopped the minibus and removed all the men. He didn't have time to go through the med commission. He's trying to stay because uh, he has an 81-year-old mother to look after. Yeah, that's FEMA. FEMA's request. Was that FEMA's? Okay. Yeah. Brother. So they drafted his brother, but he, he's taking care of an elderly who cannot survive for even a day without him. So that's the, that's the situation. All right. So FEMA's brother. And it sounds like he's a conscientious investor too. So okay, well, folks, we have just three minutes. Let's let's pray now. God, God can hear these requests, and uh, and let's lift our voices for Fima's brother, for Tanya's husband, and uh, for Stan, Pam's brother. Yeah, and I was also in touch with Diane B. from Okanagan Falls. She didn't have much to say except things are not good. <clears throat> she was grateful for me to reach out, but I haven't been able to reach her by phone, by text only. All right, let's pray. Dear Holy Father, thank you for, once again, the privilege of praying for all these wonderful requests that are coming our way. We uplift Tatiana, Lord, her children, and of course, her husband back in Ukraine. We should be getting his, you know, documents 
and uh, ready to join his family, Lord. But we pray that whatever challenges that he is facing, that it will be resolved quickly and in favor of re reunification with his family. <clears throat> Lord, we, of course, pray for the resolution of the, this unfortunate invasion and attack on the on the on the land that was free and and uh, and it's just horrible to see all this this war, Lord. But we pray that you will uh, stop whatever evil is brewing right now in eastern Ukraine, and we pray for the end to this conflict. But most importantly, Lord, spare the lives of thousands of people uh, and uh, be with the families that lost so many loved ones. We thank you for listening to us, and we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And dear Heavenly Father, we want to especially lift up a stand to you, Pam's brother, who is again in the hospital, and he is very um, I don't know, troubled, I guess, with his physical problems. He has a lot of pain, and uh, currently he's got a very... Um, high heart rate and low blood pressure and has liver problems, maybe liver cancer. And you have promised that all things can be turned to good to those who love and serve you. Well, we love and serve you here. So please hear our prayer that this could be turned around and perhaps this crisis could be used to have him turn to you. And I'm um, not sure where he's in the hospital, but maybe there could be somebody that even visits him and encourages him. And Father, we just really lift him up to you and not just him, we have a list here, Father, of all the people that need healing. And there's praise in what's been happening here and these healing requests. Um, there's also this who's just fallen. Um, he fell three stories. And that's pretty serious. Here he is and just new in the country. And so be with him also. But all the others on the list too, I pray. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we lift up Diane Bell before you, who has been diagnosed with leukemia. We ask that you'd be close to her and close to her family in a special way. Please pour out your spirit and your blessings upon them. We know, Lord, that when you heal, there is complete health. And we know that when you save, there is complete salvation. So we ask for your health and salvation for Diane yes. and your blessing upon her and her family. Father God, I, I lift up FEMA's uh, brother to you this morning, Lord, and you know the situation there and, and all that's going on. Uh, we don't know all the details, Lord, but you sure do. You, you are the God of all flesh. You Nothing is too difficult for you, Lord. You're the God of miracles. And so, I, first of all, Lord, I ask that you would give FEMA uh, your peace and, and, uh, and assurance, Lord God, that you are looking after family that he has left back home in Ukraine and, and and that you would change this situation entirely around Lord that that they would recognize it as a miracle that whatever needs to take place that it will be done and we ask it and there's so many other prayer requests Lord of, of so many people hurting and and needing your attention Jesus and you are you are the God that heals you are the God that that surrounds us you are the God that gives us peace you are everything That's jesus yes. we thank you for that we, we just we just look forward to seeing what you do in the in the lives of people lord and as for us that are praying that that you would change our lives even for the better that we would that it would draw us closer to you as we see your hand moving Lord god and i i pray that for the families that are represented here that that they would know your love in a deeper way. They would know your presence in a deeper way. That you would draw us ever so close to you, Jesus, and to each other. I ask this in your name, Jesus, and for your glory. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen.